You have the greatest navy the world has ever seen. You plan for a war that will perhaps come, and what will you do with that navy? Well, one thing might be to blockade the enemy to deprive him of supplies to continue the fight and starve him out of the war. I'm Indy Nidell. Welcome to a Great War special episode about Britain's naval blockade of Germany in World War I. The British Navy had been undisputed master of the seas since the Battle of Trafalgar in 1805. For the rest of the 19th century, there was a sort of Trafalgar syndrome among the commanders of the Royal Navy, dreaming of another such battle in another war, a clash of fleets, usually against the French, with whom Britain remained rivals for most of the century. However, the rise of the German Empire as a military and economic power saw the focus of the British Navy shift from France to Germany, and Kaiser Wilhelm's ambition to build a fleet as grand as the British put them into contention. To combat this growing threat, the British Admiralty planned to resort to a strategy that had worked wonders in the past, the naval blockade. But in the years leading up to World War I, they were divided on whether such a blockade would be a close one or a distant one. A close blockade was the traditional one, where enemy ports would be directly closed off by flotillas of light ships like destroyers that prevented ships from leaving, while larger ships like dreadnoughts supported the smaller ones and prevented the enemy fleet from attacking them. But blockading Germany presented different problems from blockading the French. Instead of just operating across the channel, destroyers would now have to cross the North Sea to cut off German ports. And the destroyers currently at the Royal Navy's disposal did not have the endurance for that. There was also the growing threat of torpedoes, submarines, and mines. And if British destroyers were going to operate around the Heligoland Bight, that would be a real problem for them. So, from around 1912 on, under the leadership of First Lord of the Admiralty Winston Churchill, the distant blockade was adopted, together with the idea of drawing the enemy fleet into a single decisive battle. A distant blockade required the British Navy to close off access to the North Sea to German shipping. The English Channel would be mined and patrolled, while the heavier ships would be stationed in Scotland at Scapa Flow to prevent northern access. This would effectively turn the North Sea into a no man's land and ideally would starve Germany of supplies. Economic warfare was becoming a thing, and Germany imported around a quarter of its food. Charles Otley, British Director of Naval Intelligence, even said, The process of economic exhaustion will perhaps be slow, but the mills of the superior sea power grind exceedingly small. Six months after the outbreak of war, the grass will be springing between the cobblestones in Hamburg and Bremen, or rather, upon the wharves and quays. Six months was pretty optimistic, but just as a side note, in 1914, the value of exports to the USA from Austria, Hungary, and Germany was $124 million. The next year, it was over 100 million less, just 22 million. Now, before the war, the nations of the world had made treaties and declarations to define the parameters of a blockade and protect neutral nations' shipping rights. Neutral shipping was protected unless it could be proven that a ship was carrying contraband or supplies for use by enemy military. But what was contraband? Well, absolute contraband was stuff that could only really be used for military purposes, like rifles or artillery. Conditional contraband was stuff like animal feed that could be used to feed cavalry horses. And non-contraband was stuff that could not be seized under any circumstances but could often actually be used for military purposes anyhow. Uh, cotton, for example, could be used to make soldiers' uniforms, while fertilizers could be used to manufacture explosives. So the war broke out and Britain put its distant blockade plan into action and shut down German trade with the world. But German shipping refused to cooperate and often remained in neutral ports to avoid capture. Still, eventually, the blockade had more and more effect. Thing is, from 1914 to 1916, though German trade at sea effectively ceased, the blockade had a negligible effect. 
since Germany could still trade with the neutral nations that bordered her like Denmark and the Netherlands and could also use resources from captured territory in France and Belgium. From 1916 to the end of the war though, the blockade ground down Germany's ability to sustain itself. The Royal Navy was more ruthless about pursuing neutral shipping and the US entry into the war provided a massive boost to the blockade. See, the British blockade had been an inconvenience to American trade, but German unrestricted submarine warfare had taken American lives. The blockade was very much a waiting game. A lot of the plight of German citizens during the later stages of the war has been attributed to the blockade, but the demands of total war were the main contributing factor to Germany's suffering. The blockade just tightened the screws. According to Michael Howard, exports declined, prices rose. The inflation resulting from the growing flood of paper money hit the salaried middle classes. Imported raw materials for industry dwindled or disappeared. The combined pressures of the blockade and the demands of the armed forces resulted in growing shortages of food, fuel, and transport. The civilian population began to suffer. In late 1916, all foodstuffs were rationed and the food shortages led the German government to basically nationalize the food supply system. In Austria-Hungary, the situation wasn't much different. The Austrian ports in the Adriatic were blockaded by the Allies, restricting Austrian trade. Michael Howard points out that their generally incompetent bureaucracy barely attempted to plan a siege economy or to administer a rationing system. Vienna began to starve even earlier than Petrograd. It is a waiting game, month after month, preventing your enemy from getting supplies to replace his dwindling ones. And although it wasn't as big a success as some like to claim, it did real damage. And it's estimated 772,736 deaths in Germany were direct consequences of the blockade. When you add to that the suffering of millions, it can't help but add up to a big contribution in Germany's defeat. Now this was just a brief look at the blockade in general, but look it up yourself to get a deeper idea. Thank you Daniel Jackson for helping with the research for this episode. And if you'd like to see our episode about the Netherlands and what they were doing as a neutral nation during World War I, you can click right here for that. Don't forget to subscribe. See you next time.